Ryan Clark will uh, be on site for ESPN Super Bowl coverage. We always uh, are smarter after we talk to Ryan. You can uh, see him on a lot of the Mothership shows. And uh, he also is the host of Face First Podcast. And Ryan joining us on the program. Ryan, good to have you back. Um, let's go back to the Bills and the Chiefs and let's fix overtime yep. in the postseason. Or do we need to fix overtime in the postseason? <laughs> you know, I think it's uh, it's one of those things where obviously people are upset that a guy like Josh Allen, after playing one of the best games we've ever seen in the playoffs from a quarterback, doesn't get an opportunity to score, right? Or doesn't get an opportunity uh, to have his rebuttal, uh, per se, against what Patrick Mahomes did. And so I get that. Uh, for me, the hard thing is, is when you talk about player safety and some of these rules that we've set in place, we can't have Alabama Auburn, you know, from, from this, from the 2021 season with Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen. You can't have it go through the 25 yard line possessions and then to the two point conversions and then say in the same breath that player safety is important. But I do think it's important that the best team wins and you have 60 minutes to do that. And if you're the Buffalo Bills, you also had 13 seconds to do it, right? You had an opportunity to keep them from getting in field goal range and allowing Harrison Bucker uh, to tie the game up. Um, and you're the number one defense in the world, uh, DP, and you can't and you can't stop them from scoring a touchdown in the first over, overtime drive. But um, I think we also know that if the Buffalo Bills get the ball first with the way they were playing, Patrick Mahomes wouldn't have got an opportunity either. And so. As the week has gone on, I've grown closer and closer to saying that maybe we should fix the overtime rules um, in, in, in the playoffs, but it has to be a smart way to do it. And I'm not necessarily sure I have that solution. See, I just think it's Chiefs get a chance. Mm -hmm. uh, if, and if they score, then the Bills know they're going to get a chance. And then a, if right. they score, then after that, it's sudden death overtime. Both, okay. both teams got their chance and, you know, whatever happens after that. And I know that we want to factor in, well, the Bills should have won this game. They should have squibbed mm. the kick. They, I mean, come on, 13 seconds and you're going to let Mahomes do that to you. But I think if you want to be fair, then that would probably be the fair and equitable way to do it. Then we would have gotten yeah. Josh Allen and his chance. And really, this is about the NFL being in the business of entertainment. What would have True. been more entertaining than... Josh Allen now comes back out with the season on the line. This is the yeah. duel that you want. And I think that that's, it would set but up DB, nicely. Here's a, the, the, the other part of it is the other part of it is too, to, to, to see Patrick Mahomes complete the football to Travis Kelsey, take off the helmet, run down like that. That's exciting it as well. It's it exciting is. to know that from that position on the field, that the Buffalo bills don't come up with a stop, then the, the, their season is over. And so I think that the, the, the excitement part doesn't, doesn't waver or doesn't wane with the way that everything's set up now. But I do believe that the fairness side of it is, is different, right? If we're going to just talk about, you know, fairness. And in the other sense of it, if the Kansas City Chiefs get the ball first and they score and then Josh Allen comes down and he scores – and then Kansas City gets it back because they got they won the toss and they score again. We're going to have the same conversation. Well, Josh Allen didn't get two chances and Patrick Mahomes got two <laughs> no, chances. No, 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 because then it would be on your defense. I would say, no, <laughs> you had your chance. They had their chance. And, and right. that's it. I was also wondering, I think we had you on earlier in the season. We were talking about what defenses were doing to Kansas City. And, yes. you know, we were saying, all right, Patrick Mahomes now has to be a little bit more economical going mm -hmm. down the field. Doesn't seem like he's as economical as he was during the season when we weren't sure about that Chiefs offense or suddenly NFL well, defenses had a solution. I think he's I think he's more economical now, which has lended to some big plays with yards after the catch. This isn't the Patrick Mahomes that threw for 50 touchdowns and everything was about stretching the field vertically. Um you look to the Tyreek Hill play against two men when he beats Levi Wallace, that's an intermediate throw that the fastest man in football takes and makes it a 65-yard uh, touchdown. But that what I've seen from Patrick Mahomes is more patience. I've seen Patrick Mahomes make better decisions within the pocket and, without, and outside of the pocket. Um, this has been a strange evolution 
of Patrick Mahomes. Mm -hmm. He's always going to be extremely talented and extremely explosive, but I've seen him check the football down. I've seen him from the pocket understand Travis Kelsey is the first read. I have to hit him in the zone. We've also watched his mechanics get better as the season has gone along. I am as impressed with who he started as, what it was in the middle of the season, and who he is now as I've ever been impressed with any player's evolution in one year. And I think it, it really points to his greatness. And there um, was a points- moment, though, Ryan, where you you see Mahomes at the line of scrimmage changing the play for Kelsey, and he yells out to Kels. Do it. So you do it, Kels. Okay, if I'm on Buffalo. <laughs> Double him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I, I'm, I'm guessing – Travis Kelsey is the Kels he's talking about. And if right. you're Buffalo, like how the hell does he catch a pass? I don't well, really- you know what? They they turned it into playground football, though, DP. Like, so I always had a problem playing Madden, right? And here's why I couldn't play Madden. <laughs> Madden, because it wasn't a real game, you know? If, if, if I'm doubling Heinz Ward and I'm playing my 10-year-old son at the time and he keeps throwing the ball to Heinz Ward and screaming at me, ah, dad, you can't stop Heinz but I know I'm doubling, I'm pissed <laughs> off because I'm like, that's not real football. What Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes did was not real football. He said, Travis Kelsey says in the, the post-game presser, I told him I'm not going to run a play. I'm just going to run to where it's open. And Patrick Mahomes, to him, two of the greatest players in the world go, do it, Kels, do it. <laughs> and if you watch Patrick Mahomes, he pumps the ball twice because he don't know where the hell Travis Kelsey's going. You know? I know. And they could uh, bleak the pass. I know. It's Who would you rather face, Mahomes or Josh Allen? Wow. That's like saying, what would you rather do, die burning or drowning? <laughs> um, ooh, can I go with neither? Uh, <laughs> can I pick Jimmy Garoppolo? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I think I think uh, I'll pick Patrick Mahomes because I think he's the better player. Um, but what Josh Allen presents from a physical standpoint right now in the league is unmatched. It's if it's if prime Cam Newton was a better passer yeah. and a more explosive passer. Yeah, that's 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 a great analogy. And I I don't like my quarterbacks running. But yeah. it feels like he has to run. And I and I thought yes. if they were going to win in the playoffs, he needed to have that element of danger there in the minds. And they were going to go for it on fourth downs. So y- mm-hmm. you just know we're it's full speed ahead. Like, we're not stopping. This is the only way we're mm-hmm. going to win is not kicking field goals. And I, I, I was really amazed that Josh Allen, and I was critical of him when he first came in. Uh, okay. I, I just didn't think that he – he he knew the game. I I thought he mm-hmm. like he panicked and I mean he's matured so much that you go toe to toe and I never thought that I'd be seeing Josh Allen go toe to toe with Patrick Mahomes. You know I, I said it in the off season when I picked Buffalo Kansas City in the AFC Championship that I felt like Josh Allen showed us throughout last year he could stand across from from Patrick Mahomes on the other sideline and feel just as confident confident in his abilities as Patrick Mahomes could. There were times this year I disagreed with that. And then about the second half of the Tampa Bay Buccaneer game, he started to use his legs again and his athleticism and his physicality. And it's so crazy. Sometimes uh, a coach can look at his team and say, you know what, here is what we need to do. Josh Allen actually showed offensive coordinator Brian Dayball what to do because that team wasn't running the football yeah. before that. And when Josh started to run it, now Singletary got involved and the quarterback runs got involved. If we go back to the the ice bowl or the wind bowl bowl against the Patriots, Josh Allen should have run the ball four to five times in the red zone, and they went. They changed that after that game, and now you saw the team that we got to see this weekend against the Kansas City Chiefs. He's Ryan Clark, ESPN NFL analyst. Uh, You mentioned Jimmy Garoppolo. What's his reputation? (laughs) You know. I mean, his reputation for dating is that is definitely uh, something <laughs> that we uh, <laughs> that we point to as we like more than his football play. Um, I think Jimmy Garoppolo's reputation is one of 
he'll try to give a game away, right? We, you know, we talk about it all the time that, you know, the interception in the red zone, the interception against Dallas. We feel like there are games where Jimmy Garoppolo puts his team in danger of losing and on the other side of it wins all the time. He is the biggest oxymoron or the biggest, you know, ends of the spectrum as a quarterback that they have on any successful team. If you look at who the San Francisco 49ers are from a win-loss perspective with Jimmy Garoppolo and without, it's night and day. But do you believe and this, yet- though, that you – here's the saying. You can lose with me, but you can't win without me. Yeah. I've never heard that saying. I feel like that's some mythical thing you just made up. No, Terry, you're a superstar Terry, and a legend. <laughs> Terry Bradshaw <laughs> said this years ago, and it felt like it's applicable to Jimmy G that – you know, hey, I can mess up and we can lose, but you do need me, you know, yeah. for, for us to win. But I, I I mean, I don't know if that's true or not, but it just feels everybody goes, Jimmy G, he just wins. And I go, okay. Yeah, I think no, I, I think that's for for what they've been since he's been there. Now, if you get Aaron Rodgers, would I take Aaron Rodgers? Yes, or Tom Brady, yes, or any of those great quarterbacks. But for who he's been as a San Francisco 49ers, that's the perf that 49er, that's the perfect um I would say analogy or the perfect saying for who Jimmy G is. Yeah. Uh, explain to me from a defensive backs perspective, Cooper cup, you know, and I can say this on your show. If Cooper cup were black, we'd all talk about him in a different way. Um, in the sense that a lot of times, we, we look at the color of a wide receiver and we want to compare them to people who they look like more so than people who they play like, right? Cooper Cup is going to, you know, Cooper Cup is not Julian Edelman. Cooper Cup is not Wes, Wes Welker, right? Cooper Cup is in the conversation with the Devontae Adams and with the DeAndre Hopkins of the world. Cooper Cup is a man that can play every single position. He's an excellent route runner. But if you listen to him talk about the game, right? and explain why he does certain things, why they run certain routes. He speaks about the game like a quarterback. And so I think, and so to me, Cooper Cup is, is a Devontae Adams, uh, Justin Jefferson. He, he's in the, 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 the conversations with those type of guys for feel of the game, route running, and catching ability. I'll give you the comp I have for Cooper Cup. He doesn't play any longer. He's going to the Hall of Fame. Okay. And he works with Tom Brady occasionally. He works with Tom Brady occasionally? Larry Fitzgerald. Antonio Brown? Larry Fitzgerald. Oh, Larry Fitzgerald. <laughs> Antonio <laughs> Brown. <laughs> occasionally. The occasionally. Time, occasionally, uh, Okay. Though. All right. All right. I don't think Cooper Cup would ever be compared to uh, Antonio <laughs> Brown. I, I see uh, Cooper Cup and Larry Fitzgerald. Yeah, I think I think I think the I think Larry was was bigger and honestly never as good of a route runner. Just to be to be truthful with you, I think Cooper Cup is uh is as as route running goes, I think he's one of the greatest that's ever lived. Really? This is I, I do from you go back to the not not the catch on the big catch on Antoine Winfield, but the catch before where they're in two man on Murphy, uh, on Murphy bunting, right? He gets to the top of that route and Murphy bunting understands that he has to be inside Cooper cup right at the top of his route, his route sticks him inside and makes him fall. Right. That's some let's for a basketball comp. That's some Allen Iverson, Steph Curry, CP three type movement, you know? And to me, like Larry never had that. Larry was, was bigger and Larry had great hands. Cooper creates so much separation with his route running, man, that I just think it's so underrated the the type of athlete and player that he is. It's always great to talk to you, Ryan. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. And uh, have fun. All right, my man. Have a great day. All right. That's Ryan Clark. I told you, I always look forward to having him on.